This happened a long time ago when I was younger and I have a really bad memory but this is just me recounting the memory to the best of my ability and what I was told. I also want to preface the story that this story takes place somewhere in Indonesia where it's commonplace to have maids in your household. So when I was younger I had a strong relationship with my extended family. To me it was normal to be close with your extended family and when I'm in extended I'm not too sure how they even related to me. In particular though, I was close with my great aunt's family, calling her great aunt Sheila, whose daughter-in-laws were like my big sisters. Being the oldest child, I liked being babied by them since I was always expected to be the big sister for my little brother, and this is important for later. I was maybe 11 years old or younger, neither my parents or I can remember exactly when it happened. I just want to say that as a kid too that I loved milk. I still do, though I tend to stick with skim milk now. When I was younger though, I had a favourite local brand that had the usual strawberry flavour. The brand was called Ultra Milk. I always thought that it was cool that I was drinking something pink as a kid. Unbeknownst to my parents though, a gift basket had showed up to our doorsteps and the maids had taken the gift, thinking it was a present from one of my mother's friends. My parents had even seen the gift basket and didn't think much of it. It was full of fruit and sweets, etc. The usual kind you would send someone maybe on a special occasion or something. In hindsight, it should have been a little weird that there wasn't a special occasion occurring, but another weird part was that usually gift baskets had a card or something to indicate where it had come from, but there was no indication from who it came from. But the maids had overlooked it and my parents didn't notice at the time. They had assumed that the head maid had checked it through, but she had it. And in the gift basket, there was my favourite tiny carton of my favourite milk, even strawberry flavoured. I had lessons with a tutor and oftentimes the maid accompanying me to the lesson would bring me snacks or food since the tutoring would take a few hours. I was at my tutor's house and she was teaching me about the homework that I got today when I got thirsty and I got my carton of milk to take a sip out of it. I was really ready to take a sip of this extremely sweet artificially flavoured strawberry milk goodness but... Something was just wrong. It just didn't taste right. I don't really remember what it did taste like, but I just knew that it was wrong. I remember describing it to my parents like I felt like I licked the bottom of the foot of a metal frame chair that I had in my room at my desk. It just tasted awful. Thinking that maybe it was spoiled, my mum had warned me about drinking spoiled milk and how it can really upset your stomach, I immediately, without swallowing grabbed some tissues at the table and spat out the mouthful into the tissue and was surprised to see a sort of weird metallic beads in it. Like metal but it was liquid. Now I have never seen anything like this at this point and I was really confused. My tutor was even more confused and horrified that I just spat out a strange metallic substance from my mouth. I didn't really understand what was going on but my tutor asked to take the carton of milk where I had tried to drink from and told me to just continue working while she went to investigate. Apparently my tutor and her head maid went outside and poured a bit more of the milk into a tissue and there were more of these weird metal liquid beads in there. She asked me if I had drank any of it and I told her that maybe I took a sip or something and swallowed before I realised that something bad was in there. After that, my tutor apparently called my mum and told her that I may have been possibly poisoned. I went home without finishing my lesson, becoming slightly concerned that maybe something was wrong. I went home and I don't really remember what happened after that. There wasn't a poison centre in my country and no emergency services that would really respond, the third world country and all that, so my parents just took me to a doctor to have blood tests. I remember being pulled out of school for some time. My mum wanted me to stay home from school for the next few days, which was great for me. No one told me the severity of the situation though, and my mum just told me that she wanted me to chill at home for a while. No school, and I get to have fun? No way, I thought. So, I did. I stayed home, and I watched Avatar, The Last Airbender on DVD, while my parents were fretting over the idea that I might have been poisoned by mercury. The gift basket, which had already been taken apart and stored to eat for later, 
It was all kind of reassembled, and my parents tried to go with this to the police, but they really couldn't do anything since we literally had no leads on where this gift basket came from since it had no card, and the police really couldn't care less about our situation. Again, a third world country. I don't really know what happened other than I was pretty cool with staying home and playing. My life at home wasn't perfect, got some issues with my parents, but they were really nice to me during this time, so I enjoyed it a lot since I didn't really understand. I think my parents kept a lot of things from me to keep me from getting scared, and my parents even took me overseas to Singapore, even taking the liquid found in the carton with them in a tin or whatever to show the doctors there, where I got tested some more and it didn't seem to have any signs of poisoning. I didn't swallow and quickly spat it out, so apparently there was no harm done, which was really lucky. I'm not sure if it really was mercury in the end though, but no one has ever really told me. And at the end of the day, everyone was glad that I didn't drink enough of it to get affected by whatever it was. Now, to get into the suspect part, my parents later told me that they had a sneaking suspicion that it was possible that my grand-aunt Sheila was the one who tried to poison me. I didn't know this at the time, but around the time of this incident, grand-aunt Sheila was found to have stolen gold and jewelry from my parents' store for years, worth thousands of dollars. My parents were obviously furious, wanted to report her to the authorities, but my grandma, her sister, loved her too much and instead just cut contact with her. Since then, Grand Aunt Sheila had seemed to want to enact vengeance over being caught and has been trying to get back at us for some time. My mum had actually warned me that I couldn't play with the big sisters, Grand Aunt Sheila's daughters, many more since they did something very bad and to never get into a car with them if they showed up at my school, but it just didn't click in my mind until now. Thinking back, Grand Aunt Sheila was close enough to me to know that I loved drinking milk and maybe tried to hurt my family, even if it meant hurting her grand niece. But we could never confirm it was actually her, but Grand Aunt Sheila has continued to be a thorn in my family's side for years now. Though, my parents have learned a valuable lesson and ensured that whenever we received a gift basket that there had to be a name on it. My grandmother doesn't believe her sister did it though, but my parents firmly believe that she was the one responsible. But again, we had no proof other than her horrible character. We've received weird gifts like black seeds and hair that was supposedly some sort of witchcraft thing. But witchcraft and sorcery is actually a popular thing in Indonesia, believe it or not. But we assumed that this was all from Grand Aunt Sheila, who still lived in the same city as us, and it was the only thing that made sense. My parents unfortunately never bought me the Ultra Milk brand again, which I was okay with since that moment spoiled the Ultra Milk brand to me anyway. I was reminded of this story while drinking strawberry milk the other day. Different brand. I'm no longer living in Indonesia, not in the same country as Grand Aunt Sheila anymore. But even so, after drinking it, I couldn't help but think of this story again. One of the scarier things that I ever experienced happened when I was about 13 or 14 and I started babysitting for my aunt. She had always been into Ouija boards and tarot cards and all that stuff. Anything that had to do with the paranormal, really. Well, while she was pregnant with her fourth boy, she continued dabbling in the paranormal. I told her that I was worried about her using those things while pregnant, fearing that it would somehow mess with the baby. She insisted, though, that it would be okay and told me not to worry about it. Throughout her pregnancy, noises would happen in the house, weird sounds, things moving, but it got so much worse when she had her baby boy, whom she named Austin. I continued helping her babysitting because she had four boys to take care of. Creepy stuff started happening when Austin was just weeks old as well. I would hold him, feeding him, and notice that he would look straight up towards the ceiling and smile. I never saw what he was smiling at, but then when he was about two months old, my aunt was gone, working at a job, I put him down to sleep and he had a blue and yellow polka dotted pacifier in his mouth while sleeping. I sat down in the living room to watch TV and I heard noises from Austin's room. I muted the TV, got up and opened the door to his room. He was still asleep, but his pacifier wasn't in his mouth. I looked everywhere for it as well. And in the end, I gave up and just went to the kitchen since he was asleep still. 
I got something to drink and a glass, and when I sat down on the counter, there it was. That same blue and yellow polka-dotted pacifier laying on the counter. I looked around to see if maybe one of the other boys may have gotten up and took it out from his room, but they were all sound asleep. Plus, I would have seen them come through the living room if they had. I know I didn't move it because I made sure that he was sleeping with it in his mouth. I've heard that they helped the baby to remember to breathe at night. But things like this just kept happening. When he was old enough to talk some, he also started talking about Daniel. Things like Daniel friend, Daniel mad, Daniel's here. I passed it off as just an imaginary friend at first. My aunt ended up pregnant again, but this time a little girl, when Austin was almost two as well. She had stopped messing with Ouija boards and everything too while she was pregnant this time. Austin kept talking about Daniel, but we all just kept thinking that it was an imaginary friend. After Jessa, the baby girl, was born, I started staying at my house more because my aunt had taken time off from work to be with her new baby and her boys. Austin started telling me that Daniel had started hurting him. He would pop up with bruises too and scratches and I told my aunt about it and she said that he'd been telling her the same thing but she assumed it was where the boys would play rough with each other or something like that. I asked if I could start babysitting again so I could spend more time with Austin and maybe he was just feeling lonely and that's why this Daniel character popped up and she agreed. Now, while playing toys with Austin one day, I noticed he had a big scratch on his back. I asked him about it and he said that Daniel had scratched him because he wouldn't hurt his baby sister. I asked if Daniel was bad and he told me that he would get in trouble if he continued to talk about him. I said, why? Will your mummy get mad? And he shook his head no and whispered, Daniel gets mad. So I just didn't bring it up again for a while. But when Jessa was a little older, maybe 18 months old, I still babysat because at this point my aunt was working again and gone a lot due to working long hours. And one day while cleaning, I shampooed the living room carpet. I told the kids to stay upstairs until it dried or sat on the steps. Austin was with me. I usually kept him close by trying to figure out what was causing the marks on him. Other than moving toys and things missing and little noises here and there, I never saw anything. I took Austin to the kitchen with me and the other boys were keeping an eye on Jessa upstairs. When I came back to check the carpet, I noticed large footprints in the carpet. Way too big for any of the boys to make. But Jessa was sitting at the top of the stairs giggling and then she said it. Daniel. Austin looked up at me and said, She's right, sissy. Daniel did that. And he pointed to the footprints. I told my aunt what happened and she said that she would look into cleansing the home. During this time, a holiday was coming up anyway, the 4th of July. My aunt and her kids would always come to my house to celebrate and shoot fireworks and eat and the kids would play, etc. The day came and we got started. Everything was going okay and everyone was having fun and then I sat down and started talking to my mother about Austin and his imaginary friend Daniel. I yelled for him to come over to me and when he got to me I told him to tell my mother about Daniel. And just a look of pure fear washed over his face. He said, Sissy, we can't talk about Daniel, he'll get mad at me. So I just shook my head and I said... Okay, I'm sorry, maybe we'll talk about it later, huh? But go ahead and go play. He turned around and started to run towards my house. And out of nowhere, it looked like something shoved him really hard. He flew up at a good two feet and fell to the concrete. He busted his head open and had to be taken to the hospital, in fact. Sixteen stitches. I honestly felt horrible for bringing up Daniel, but that was the first time that I'd seen that thing physically do something. Everybody saw the same thing too. Something pushed him with a force that only a grown man could produce. I told my aunt something needed to be done because obviously this thing was attached to Austin and was hurting him. Jessa could also see Daniel as well but for some reason he just wasn't as interested in her. My aunt talked to a friend of hers. Her friend agreed to help her to try and get rid of this thing. Terry was her name. And she came to my aunt's house and immediately noticed that something was there. 
said Daniel was angry and alone, that it definitely was attached to Austin and wanted Austin to hurt people because he was angry at them for being alive and when Austin wouldn't hurt people, Daniel would hurt him. She started burning sage and other things, saying prayers and all that. Austin was in his room playing by himself. When Terry tried to go into his room, the door slammed shut. We heard Austin scream and me and Terry and my aunt tried getting the door open but it was stuck. Terry put a hand on the door and started saying something that I couldn't understand and then everything got quiet and the door clicked like it unlocked. We opened the door and Austin was lying on his bed sleeping like nothing had happened. I went over to him and pulled his blanket off. He had fingerprint bruises on his arms and his toys were all dumped out and his clothes were just thrown everywhere. All his drawers were open and everything was just a complete wreck. Immediately though, Terry started waving the sage everywhere and chanting something. My aunt held Austin and Terry continued into every single room. And after that day, my aunt got rid of all of her paranormal stuff. And it finally all stopped. And after Terry left... We never had any more problems. Austin is 17 now, and he actually remembers most of what happened. But he hates to talk about it. Jessa doesn't remember any of it. But my aunt never touched any more of the Ouija boards, tarot cards, none of it ever again. The only thing I could ever think of related to this Daniel was an old friend of mine. When I was between the ages of 7 and 11, I had a friend who was like a brother to me. His dad married my aunt and we became very close. My aunt and his dad ended up getting divorced when I was 10, so we lost contact for a little bit. I finally found him and we started talking again when I was 11. Everything seemed okay and he made plans to come and visit me. The day before he came to visit though, he actually ended it. He was 16 at the time and I don't know if this thing was him because I could never see Daniel harming any child, but... Maybe it was something that pretended to be him, thinking that I would be more comfortable if there was someone I knew. But that is honestly the only Daniel that I could think of when all this happened. I live in the suburbs on a cul-de-sac where across the road is a forest which eventually backs up onto a river. Last night, around midnight, my dog was scratching at the front door wanting to be let out to pee. Usually, I'd just let her out into the backyard, but it being a nice summer night anyway, I put her on a leash and walked her across the street to the forest so she could do her business. But as soon as we got across the street, she started tugging on the leash and growling, looking towards the forest. I looked up and... I noticed a dozen twinkling lights coming from the otherwise pitch black forest, as if people were shining flashlights in my direction. Freaked out, I picked up my dog and ran all the way home, locking the door behind me. I ran up to my bedroom, which has a pretty good view of the forest, and I began watching out of my window. I saw about a dozen men walk out of the forest carrying flashlights. They looked like they were wearing suits, but the only light that I had was a street lamp, so they may have been wearing full black outfits, I'm not too sure. A couple of them held briefcases, and about four of them were carrying a, a door or something. Yeah, just a random door off of its hinges. Then, trailing behind them was a woman in a white dress. They walked into the middle of the cul-de-sac, where the girl proceeded to lift up her dress, squat, and pee in the middle of the street. It was then that my neighbor down the road, who I'm guessing saw the flashlights through his window, started screaming, Hey, what the hell are you doing? Calmly, the group of people just turned around, walked back down the cul-de-sac, across the street, and back into the forest. I woke up my parents, who truly believed that I'd just had a bad dream until this morning when all of our neighbors were outside talking about the occurrence. Word started traveling around the block, and now everyone is talking about it. A couple of neighbors have already called law enforcement about it to keep an eye on the forest of our street. There are rumors going around that they're a cult of some sort, vampires, time travelers, etc. And I just don't really know what to think or believe, but I'm sure thankful that I spotted them when I did. G'day mates, it's Bee Buster here. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you would like to help me out, then please go ahead and watch another video by clicking on a card on the screen. 
As always, guys, thanks for all the love and support, and I'll see you mates in the next one.